Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, April 6th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today, in our Old Testament reading, we turn to Isaiah chapter 5 and hear a parable about the Lord's vineyard. I will sing about the one I love, a song about my loved one's vineyard. The one I love had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He broke up the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted it with the finest vines. He built a tower in the middle of it, and even dug out a wine press there. He expected it to yield good grapes, but it yielded worthless grapes. So now, residents of Jerusalem and men of Judah, Please judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I did? Why then, when I expected a yield of good grapes, did it yield worthless grapes? Now I will tell you what I am about to do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it will be consumed. I will tear down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, and it will not be pruned or weeded. Thorns and briars will grow up. I will also give orders to the clouds that rain should not fall on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of armies is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah the plant he delighted in. He expected justice, but saw injustice. He expected righteousness, but heard cries of despair. Woe to those who add house to house and join fields to field, until there is no more room and you are alone, you alone are left in the land. I heard the Lord of armies say, Indeed, many houses will become desolate, grand and lovely ones without inhabitants. For a ten-acre vineyard will yield only six gallons of wine, and ten bushels of seed will yield only one bushel of grain. Woe to those who rise early in the morning in pursuit of beer, who linger into the evening inflamed by wine. At their feasts they have lyre, harp, tambourine, flute, and wine. They do not perceive the Lord's actions, and they do not see the work of his hands. Therefore my people will go into exile because they lack knowledge. Her dignitaries are starving, and her masses are parched with thirst. Therefore Sha'ol enlarges its throat and opens wide its enormous jaws, and down go Zion's dignitaries, her masses, her crowds, and those who celebrate in her. Humanity is brought low, each person is humbled, and haughty eyes are humbled. But the Lord of armies is exalted by his justice, and the holy God demonstrates his holiness through his righteousness. Lambs will graze as if in their own pastures, and resident aliens will eat among the ruins of the rich. Woe to those who drag iniquity with cords of deceit and pull sin, al sin along with cart ropes. To those who say, let him hurry up and do his work quickly so that we can see it. Let the plan of the Holy One of Israel take place so that we can know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. Who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who consider themselves wise and judge themselves clever. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine, who are champions at pouring beer, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore, as a tongue of fire consumes straw and as dry grass shrivels in the flame, so their roots will become like something rotten and their blossoms will blow away like dust. For they have rejected the instructions of the Lord of armies, and they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the Lord's anger burned against his people. He raised his hand against them and struck them. The mountains quaked, and their corpses were like garbage in the streets. Streets. In all this, his anger has not turned away, and his hand is still not raised to strike. He raises a signal flag for the distant nations and whistles for them from the ends of the earth. Look, how quickly and swiftly they come. 
None of them grows weary or stumbles. No one slumbers or sleeps. No belt is loose and no sandal strap broken. Their arrows are sharpened and all their bows strung. Their horses' hooves are like flint. Their chariot wheels are like a whirlwind. Their roaring is like a lion's. They roar like young lions. They growl and seize their prey and carry it off, and no one can rescue it. On that day they will roar over it, like the roaring of the sea. When one looks at the land, there will be darkness and distress. Light will be obscured by clouds. Yesterday in our New Testament reading, we heard a catalog of people who lived by faith. Today, those people who lived by faith are going to be a cloud of witnesses cheering us on as we now run with endurance the race that lies before us. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and give up. In struggling against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly, or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us, and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time based on what seemed good to them. But he does it for our benefit, so that we can share his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your tired hands and weakened knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed instead. Pursue peace with everyone and holiness. Without it, no one will see the Lord. Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up, causing trouble and defiling many. And make sure that there isn't any immoral or irreverent person like Esau, who sold his birthright in exchange for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought it with tears, because he didn't find any opportunity for repentance. For you have not come to what could be touched, to a blazing fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words. Those who heard it begged that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The appearance was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of angels, a festive gathering, to the assembly of the firstborn whose names have been written in heaven, to a judge who is God of all, to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood, which says better things than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not reject the one who speaks. For if they did not escape when they rejected him who warned them on earth, even less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven. His voice shook the earth at that time. 
But now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This expression, yet once more, indicates the removal of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what is not shaken might remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. By it, we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.